Hello students, we are going to learn about how to give your introductions effectively. There are various ways through which you can introduce yourself, but let's learn how to have it more effectively. The first point through which you can start your introduction is by taking your name. A lot of the times I have seen that people start their introduction with myself and XYZ name, which is technically wrong. So ideally you should start your introduction and your name with either my name is or I am. Like for, for that example, my name is Simon George or I can say I am Simon George. But if I'll say myself Simon George, then it is technically incorrect. So the first point that you need to consider and to utilize in your further interactions is how do you take your name properly. Second is you'll talk about your current status which means currently what are you doing for example that i am pursuing phd in management from xyz university right then third point is what about your native place now it is very important to talk about your native place because there can be many questions that can arise through your native place then how are you going to talk about that it's very simple you would say I was born and brought up in New Delhi. That is an example. You can utilize it for your own birthplace. For example, you can say I was born and brought up in Lucknow. I was born and brought up in Jaipur. But one thing that you need to be careful about is born and brought up itself means that you were born and raised in that location. For example, if you are born in New Delhi but raised up in Mumbai, then you would say I was born in New Delhi but I was brought up in Mumbai. Now third point after this would be your aim. Now it is very important to talk about your aim in your introduction because it gives a very very critical information to the other person about what you want to do with your life. Now there are a lot of misconceptions related to aim. People think that whatever they want to do in their life is their aim. But aim cannot be completed without a time frame. So if I say I want to be a top engineer with XYZ company, it's just a wish, it's just a dream. But if I say that I want to be a top engineer with XYZ company within the next three years, then it becomes my aim. So it is very critical to talk about your aim because it would give the other person a very positive note. The next point is talking about your family details. It is equally important because your family status can say a lot of things. How, how are you going to talk about the family? I will talk about my family like my father is Mr. George Samuel. A lot of times I have heard people say my father's name is Mr. So and so which is technically right but it doesn't sound well. So in that case, I would say confidently that my father is Mr. So-and-so and I'll talk about the profession like he is retired from engineer force. Similarly, I'll talk about my mother like my mother is Mrs. So-and-so and she is a housewife, she is a service engineer, she is a quality checker. You can give any, any definitions uh, which, whichever is applicable. After that, you're going to talk about your brothers and sisters. So you can say, I've got two siblings, I've got three siblings, I've got one elder brother, I've got one younger sister, or any combination, whichever is possible. It is equally important to give the information because there can be some questions related to that. I'm going to cover the point why we have to follow this chronological order in this lecture. Then at the end, we are going to talk about the hobbies which are also very important now a lot of times i have seen people like uh, saying about my hobby is cricket so is it watching cricket or is it playing cricket is what you need to clear so if i'll say my hobby is watching baseball game so i would say i would love watching it now this gives a positive note a positive creative note to the person who is listening or whomsoever I am interacting that he would know about what sort of activities I love to do whenever I am in free time. There is one last thing which is the most important part which is talking about the strengths that you have. 
Now, the stance can be different for different people. Some of the people would say that I am a hard working person. Some people would say I am a smart working person, I am hard working, I am honest, I am loyal. But if you combine it with your current status, it is going to add value to your introduction. For example, I say I am an enthusiast and a smart working manager working in XYZ company. Now this gives me advantageous position because the person is actually going to know about everything which I want to talk about and not something where he can ask questions to. And if I allow the person to ask the questions on the grounds where I am confident, certainly I would have an advantage in the introduction. So I hope this point, this topic that we have discussed about how to have an effective introduction is clear to you. So go ahead and give your effective introductions. Thank you very much.